striving to achieve a distinction in your individual units and in the course as a whole is something you should consider for at least three good reasons. First of all, you'll get a great feeling of satisfaction knowing that you've been able to achieve the highest grade. Secondly, it will help your application stand out when you apply for jobs or for the next level of your education. A distinction suggests that you are a person who puts the most into what you do rather than somebody who settles for something that is just okay. And thirdly, the, the academic standard that you need to meet in order to gain a distinction is very similar to the standards you'll have to meet if you continue with undergraduate and postgraduate study. The assessor is really looking for two things in particular when applying the distinction criteria. They want to see an appropriate level of academic rigour, which you need to evidence by accurately citing a wide range of references in your assignments using the Harvard referencing system. The assessor doesn't want your uninformed or unsubstantiated opinion. They're looking for your opinion based on the knowledge you have gained and the research you have conducted, accurately referenced. Keep in mind that a, a reference to a learned journal or an established text is much more powerful than referencing a blog or a quote from a tabloid newspaper and uh, never cite Wikipedia as a formal academic source because it just isn't. Wikipedia is content from various sources collated by somebody who may or quite likely may not be a subject expert. So read Wikipedia by all means, use it as a starting point for further investigation, but don't reference it in your assignments. The second thing the assessor is looking for at this level is your ability to apply the theories and concepts you have studied to real world situations. Ultimately, your business education is designed to help you build a successful business career, where it will be essential to apply your knowledge to real situations. To gain a distinction, you will have to meet all the pass and the merit criteria we have already discussed, plus two additional distinction criteria. The first distinction criteria for Unit 2 requires you to critically analyse and evaluate the key elements of the marketing function and how they interrelate with other functional units of an organisation. The key difference here between this and the pass and the merit criteria is that now you're being asked to, to critically analyse. So this means you need to show that you can analyse the information available, make considered judgments using your knowledge and experience, and support this with evidence, which of course should be appropriately referenced. This means spending time at looking through all the course materials provided by the college, but also reading the recommended resources listed on the last page of the unit specification, and conducting your own research and background reading. The second distinction criteria for Unit 2 requires you to design a strategic marketing plan that tactically applies the use of the seven P's to achieve overall marketing objectives. So here, you're really building on the pass and the merit criteria, but providing more depth, more support and more evidence for why the marketing strategy you are proposing will achieve the marketing objectives you have defined in your plan. You need a, a clear rationale for why your recommendations will produce the results that you want, which is likely to be a combination of well-reasoned argument and examples of good practice from other organisations. Finally, three tips which you should keep in mind when writing your assignments. First of all, make sure that you sense check and spell check your projects before you submit them. Correct spelling and grammar aid understanding of your key points uh, but they also demonstrate that you really care about what you're writing. Secondly, take every opportunity to showcase your knowledge and understanding of the core concepts, models and theories in the unit and demonstrate your ability to apply them. And thirdly, keep close to your tutor for support and guidance. So that brings us to the end of these guidance lectures for Unit 2. I hope you've found them useful and they've helped you to prepare for writing your assignments.